Okay, guys, so on, on this class, I'm gonna try to cover a little bit uh, the advanced, advanced thing that, that we can do on a, on a CNC and that will be uh, machining from both sides, how to, how to create like a few basic things that normally uh, they are using in eyewear industry, which is gonna be like a massive chamfering and then some uh, like a indentation or other way around uh, indentation uh, to, the, to the outside. And I'm gonna show you how to make a 3D model of, of this. It's a bit, uh, one of, um, the one of them is a bit tricky. The other one is uh, that simple and we're gonna play with a, with a function offset a lot today. And uh, it's gonna be quite, quite fun. And I'm gonna show you afterwards how to create, a, how to create the manufacturing process and the G code for both front and back and how to assure that you don't have a problem with finding properly your uh, zero and when you do the machining first on the front and then back how to make it perfectly aligned so we can jump to it so the first I think I'm going to show you how to do these two frames because they are quite simple and you can we can just make like a little cut out for the eyes and all the way around we can just leave the silhouette of the frame with a little offset around the and it, it's, it's always like a nice nice feature when you using the laminated material which is normally like a between one or two millimeter difference of the of the of the lamination so you can create like a two colors without any problems and I'm gonna try to point out on a, about a few things that normally is a problem and how to avoid some issues when you do something like this so let's jump into it well this is the, one of the frames but I'm gonna show you from scratch how to do it. So I'm just gonna use my first uh, sketch here that I create with a frame because we did it so many times. So I don't think I need to do a uh, shape of the frame again. And I'm gonna create a new file, sketch and paste my frame here. So as, as normally just the outline of the frame, it's in a normal size i think it's 75 millimeters so it's going to be 150 overall so the size feels right and uh, if i know that i'm going to make a frame that uh, that i will do the machining from both sides i'm always creating here on this first sketch my reference point so it's going to be the point where i uh, when i do the first machining on the front i'm going to make myself a little hole during this process and when I flip the material all the way around, that hole is going to be my new zero. So I will know exactly where is the center and uh, how to align the frame. So I will create here for the function center uh, diameter circle. And I'm just going to create somewhere here on my center line of the frame. Just create two circles. The one is going to be, let's say, 3.5 millimeter is going to be the small one and the outside is gonna be, let's say, six. And then I'm not gonna bother right now with the, with the nose pads and hinges. I'm gonna do first the front and then I will do the back afterwards. So I'm gonna extrude my frame and this helping circle, the out one, uh, outline one by six millimeter as a normally my material. And then on the front, um, for example, here I'm thinking like a maybe just to make this boring frame a bit more interesting. Just I'm gonna create like a little uh, outline of the of the lens and then make like a like a straight recess. So I'm gonna create another sketch on the top of this frame of this half, and then use this function offset here. So you can use this function offset and you can drag that uh, that line away from a lens or inside, but in this case, uh, outside. And normally I'm just like, I can do it. It's always good to here to left here some material. If you go uh, close to zero, it's gonna be a bit tricky. And sometimes you're gonna end up with a, like a not very nice edge. So I've always leave like a, at least, let's say half a millimeter or something like this. So I'm gonna create this, uh, press okay. And then I just don't wanna have this this in uh, this recess, so I'm gonna make a little bit extra uh, extra lines here, 
to get uh, closer to my lux. So I'm just gonna use the functional uh, fit point spline and then start somewhere on this new line and then just create myself a, like a little line here then one straight one down which kind of like a following the the outline of the of the lock and then i'm gonna do little line here and press enter and now what i can do is just go back to solid and press on this surface and this surface and I tell it I want to recess two millimeter and sometimes if you don't have this perfectly connected it's not going to extrude it so you can go back to your sketch open it uh, just uh, to see it here and you might need to do it again to have this nice because when you're connecting uh, that sketch that 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 uh, that outline sketch with a new spline sometimes making a little bit of problems and so it's it's a, you, you might do it with a, with the two steps so as you can see now we have like a this indentation so if here on the top we can maybe have uh, some havana and on the bottom there's going to be some uh, some monocolor i'm not now bo bothered with uh, the hump here on the top and this doesn't look also good but it doesn't really matter because we can have it like this just make sure that if you do something like this make sure that uh, make sure that here these corners is not going to be completely sharp because you're not going to use micro tools for this so there's going to be some radius but normally it doesn't matter and in this point i'm going to do the rest of the frame so as usual just create a sketch on the back of the frame and for today it's going to be just i'm going to create nose pads extrude them by four millimeter make sure that you in this operation always join uh, the bodies together and I'm gonna create here some random uh, recess for the hinge it's, I'm gonna make it eight and four some so it looks at least like a like a hinge recess and I'm gonna extrude this one minus one then a few uh, fillets here so it looks a bit closer and that's it so we have like a our frame like this and in this point we can just uh, make uh, we can just uh, mirror the whole frame as usual object i want to select the body and object is going to be this and the mirror plane is going to be the center point and that's it we have our frame and we can jump straight to manufacturing i would always recommend you when you do uh, when you planning to do machining from both sides you can do it that you can first start with the back when you glue your pads and do do your frame in the back and the, and the hinges and everything and cut everything out. It's a bit tricky because you need to leave quite a lot of material here on the bottom just to make sure it's not going to pop out completely. So you still hold the frame correctly. So recently I stopped doing it all the way around that I'm always machining the front first, then just make all these like recesses and everything. And then uh, take the material out, out of CNC, glue the pads on and the next day I'm doing the back of the frame. It's normally like a, because first of all, I will have that extra, I'm, I'm usually having that extra 24 hours to get rid of the acetone from the nose pads gluing and it works quite well and it's a bit hustle free, uh, hustle free version to how to do this, but usually it's extra, it's extra 24 hours to do this. And if you, if you do the back first, you need to have your jig on your CNC prepared for the nose pads that the, that the whole frame will fit nicely flush with your bed which most of the people have, but uh, some people are have just a flat bed, so it's a bit, bit tricky. So I'm going to start with the front. So I'm going to create a new setup. And um, normally I'm just going here, starting with the stock and always uh, using the relative 
uh, size box. So I'm gonna just tell it that I wanna same size of my frame and the same height of my frame. And when I'm doing front, I'm always setting up my zero, basically anywhere you want. You can, you can set up X and Y, but the Z, I'm always like when it's sitting on the top of the frame. So I know if, I, if the layer is two millimeter on the top, I just wanna literally go two millimeter lower. So I'm just always leaving it on the top like this, X, Y, and Z on the top. Uh, I select the model. Yeah. And now for machining something like this, you need to think about, about that if you want to do this, you will need to use probably quite small tool just to make sure that you can get into all these corners and you have a, you have a nice surface. So there is a problem with a small tool. They have a tendency to, uh, the tendency to vibrate a lot. And because of this area, it's gonna be absolute hell to, uh, to send it down afterwards. So you need to get as best surface as you can do because you cannot really reach it with a sand, um, uh, sandpaper or something. So I would definitely recommend you to, if you wanna do this recess, use the two millimeter tool and instead of, uh, instead of normally that we're using the upcut tools, so when it's cutting, it has a nicer surface on the top and slightly worse on the bottom, downcut tools having the perfect surface on the bottom. So you, just, you can go a bit, a bit slower with this operation, but you're going to end up very, with a really nice surface. And you don't need to do any more sanding at all. I'm going to show you. Like a, we're going to use the operation 2D bucket, and we're just going to select this and this face. And for the tool, we create a new tool and it's gonna be flat end mill and it's gonna be two millimeter diameter. That's this. I'm gonna select this tool. And then here a few uh, in important things. When you go through this fourth uh, tab, passes, Always, if you do two millimeter tool, never go deeper than two millimeter on one pass because it's gonna be it's gonna be okay, but it's gonna vibrate quite a lot. So I would definitely recommend you to do multiple passes, even it seems a bit excessive. But if you go, let's say, 1.5 millimeter, that's gonna be enough. And it's good in this case to use the finishing cut when you cut almost everything. Then just leave 0 0.1 millimeter and do the final cut. Just to just to basically almost polish the surface, so so you don't need to touch it afterwards. So finishing step down one, and then zero point two millimeters should be perfectly okay. And then important thing: don't leave here any stock. Just go on a zero 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 here stock to leave, and you don't want to do any stock to leave. So you're gonna have these operations. So it's it's gonna give you a really, really nice surface and just to make sure that you don't need to touch that thing at all. And for this, now it's important because now on this front, you just did your front cutting, but it's important now that you have, you somehow you clamp your material and you wanna make this little tiny hole just to make sure that when you flip the material, that hole is gonna be absolutely in the center. So for this operation, you're gonna use uh, this function bore and then just click on this on the cylinder inside and it's gonna create a small hole. Normally I'm using uh, this hole in a 3.2, 3.5 millimeter just to just to see when I'm, when I'm gonna use my uh, 3.1 millimeter cutter just to have a nice vision like a, if I'm uh, in the center or not. So that's those two operations and then in the same, on the same frame, we can, we can do the machining back, but we need to create a new setup. So this is set up for a front and we're gonna create here a new setup. We can use the similar, similar thing like a, from the relative size, it can be the same with a zero and zero. Only things that we need to change now, as you can see the Z is all the way around. So you need to change orientation and here you can flip the Z. So you are basically having the Z axis 
going up. And you need to select your set. Now it's the important thing, never forget about this, that your new zero point, if you press here the origin and select point, your zero point is going to be on the bottom of this little cylinder. Because this is going to be, because then you will know that you are perfectly in the center. So X, Y, and Z. And just here, select the model. It's going to be this and this. And then here, there is a very simple, as usual, setup. Then you can just do the on the top, you can use the scalloping just to make sure that you have a nice and you will create a new tool. Normally, just if you do something like this, go for a larger tool because it's going to vibrate less and it's going to give you a better surface. So as usual, we are using 3.175 and that's it. And here, machine boundary, you press selection and your eyes, and then click on a hinges that you don't want to machine them in this operation. And that's going to give you this. And you know the, the step afterwards, how to do the eyes and the, and the outside. Just a, just a one trick, because if you look here, if you, because you're not going to cut the material all the way down. So I would recommend you when you do the lenses, leave a few tabs there when you do the, uh, when you do the eyes. So it's going to still hold nicely in a position. So you can use the 2D contour and you're not going to click here on a bottom. So you're going to just cut it uh, towards your previous cutting and that should be it as usual. Don't forget to uh, not go more than, let's say, three millimeters deep and put a few taps. Maybe this is slightly too excessive. So maybe in a something like this, that should be better. And that's going to give you the nice, nice cut of the lenses. And for the outside, you can duplicate this operation and select the outline with also a few tabs. So that's basically it. And when you do the machining, you can just export two of these first, do the machining on the front, then do the rest of your stuff, glue the pads and just export your machining from for back. And as we did this, like uh, this recess, you can do something very similar with basically opposite opposite direction you can just project yourself the outside and make this frame that 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 recess all the way around and that's that's very simple so like i'm going to share these files with you so you can you can take a look how these two frames were done and now let's take a look on this one because this is going to be a bit tricky uh, just to I'm, I'm not sure if it's very visible how the frames actually look like and what i'm trying to achieve but what I'm trying to achieve is something like this effect. So make like a really big uh, chamfered, uh, chamfered edge, but uh, the edge which is not um, symmetric. So it can be on one side, let's say five, six millimeters, on the other side can be two, but it nicely follows the, the shape of the frame. So it's a bit tricky and I'm going to show you how to do this. So I'm going to open this file and just use the original sketch and try to do it with you again. So this new file, click on X and Y and paste. So it's the same process like uh, I did yesterday, uh, sorry, previously, just the uh, shape of the frame plus this little two circles. And what we're going to do is go to solid, extrude this and this by six millimeters. And then because I want to have what I want to do here, I want to create 
that recess, but I don't want the recess to be here on a on a center on, on a bridge. So I just basically want to like a, the shape of the lens and the outline. So I'm gonna create a new new sketch here, and I'm gonna use the function here in modify. I think it's modify. Uh, uh, uh. project here use a, a functional uh, a function project or you can just press P project and you're gonna click on this whole surface so you're gonna click on that surface and because I don't want to do the chamfer here on the bridge so I'm gonna create here a little extra spline which is basically gonna be the, the end of of my of my bridge or let's say beginning I can just move it a little bit and finish the sketch so this is this is one of the sketches and then I need to basically create how deep I want to make that that recess here on a, on a bottom so how would, would I realize what is the easiest way how to do it is if I go on a back create a sketch here on the bottom again and then project this lens and then here press extrude and extrude this because I want to have because the frame is six millimeter so I need to have if I do this this recess I need at least three millimeter to just have a, enough mass of the frame to put the lenses so I think your maximum should be let's say minus three millimeters and that's gonna create that new, the end of that, the spine. And now we're gonna go to operation here that that is called loft. So loft it means that I'm gonna extrude one shape into another one. So here I'm gonna in this uh, in this operation I'm gonna press plus, and I'm gonna select that. Uh, one of the shape I want to extrude into is going to be the lens and the other one I need to turn here I need to turn on this sketch that we created before with that little line here it's, so, it's, this, it's this one and I'm going to press here and then the second profile is going to be this so I just click on that sketch on the top and you can see now that it's these two these lines are showing me that there's going to be a slope so and the operations I want to cut it out so I press cut and it's going to create that like a nice transition between the outside of the frame and the inside of the lens and this is a bit tedious because there is that leftover of this material so I'm just going to press here extrude and get rid of it and that's it and you can now have the this it's not exactly the same like on this picture but it's something really close to it so you have a, like a nice transition you can play with it you can even if you have a square frame or you can have any shape you can always make this this transition and it looks absolutely amazing and it's makes uh, it can make out of absolutely boring frame super interesting frame now I'm gonna uh, do the rest of the stuff on the back here I'm gonna create no spats again. Here, four mil. And join and create a fillet here and here. Five mil. I'm not gonna bother now with the with the hinge, but you know the drill. It's basically. You're gonna make yourself some recess. Always be careful when you do frame like this. It's a bit tricky to do the rivet hinges because you don't have the. It's a, it's a bit tricky to dr to make a nice doming there. So I think for frames like this, you will always need to use. Uh, <clears throat> you, you always need to use uh, heat sunk hinges, or if you wanna play with the idea that you're gonna basically show that you are using the rivet hinges. You can you can make like a little extrusion here and and show that like a little shape of the hinge there, and it might look quite nice or it might be a bit a bit disrupting. 
So I'm gonna create, I'm gonna mirror now the whole frame. And you can see it looks quite similar. <coughs> Sorry. Good. And now we can, we can use the same uh, setup that we had here on this frame because it can help us a little bit to, uh, to do all these uh, planes and all the correct uh, positions of the axis. So I can copy those two setups and go here to manufacture, click once on the setups and paste them here. So th this is gonna be a different. So I'm gonna click on this front and press edit just to tell him that we're gonna play with this and this model. And you can see it's already nicely sitting X, Y and Z on the top. So this is all sorted, but we need to make this, this surface now. So for this, it's, I'm not sure if you, if you ever tried. So if you use the normal cutter that you're using with a flat bottom, you're gonna end up with a quite deep ridges on the surface. So the best way how to do this surface is having the cutter with a round uh, round head so you can use like a, the finishing finishing cutters or what I'm normally is, is using is a one one eight inch with a ball head it's a really cheap cutter and it's, it's making a really nice surface and the good thing is what I like about this cutter that I can I can also use it to make to drill this hole so I don't need to change the tool for this hole but I can use it for any other operation so I'm gonna show you how to do this this operation for this uh, for this scalloping so you're gonna select scallop and we're gonna create a new tool which is gonna be ball and mill and I'm using normally 3.175 mil diameter and if you click on the second tab here it's automatically showing, uh, giving you the selection of the silhouette, but it's better to just click here on a selection and you click on a top, top and the bottom of your, of your edge and also here. And <clears throat> here there's a, there's a step over. If, if I leave the, this step over here, which is 0 0.2 millimeter, I can show you how it's going to look like. You can see that it's gonna do a lot of a lot of steps, and you're gonna end up with a really nice surface. But I think this operation, this one, will take about 12 minutes to do this. So I think it's quite long. So normally I'm I'm here for this. If I go back, edit, I just have a step over 0 0.5 millimeter, which is still a quite nice surface. But you can see it's like a, you're going to have a, probably about six minutes of machining, which is OK. And the surface is going to be really good. And what I tried before with this 0 0.5 millimeter, if you use the ball head, you don't need to do almost any sanding at all. So if you just cut it like this and then you do and then dip it in acetone, it's basically melt all these little steps together. And then you put them in a put the frame in a barrels and you're going to end up with an almost perfect surface. So. You don't need to send send it afterwards and there is no chance that you're gonna destroy some edge or anything so just go for 0 0.5 millimeter step over and dip them in acetone for one second and that should be enough so this is this operation i, I can delete this first one because it doesn't make any sense here so i'm gonna start with the scallop and then don't forget to make that little hole here and select the cylinder just to make sure that you have uh, do you have your zero point for your uh, for your backside so if I go back to edit the back here it's asking me about the model so I'm gonna select this and this and just to make sure that now it doesn't know where is the zero point because I put it on a piece of uh, previous frame so I need to just here press the origin select point and I'm gonna put here on the bottom origin select 
here on the bottom of this little cylinder. So it's now perfectly centered and you can do the back of the frame. So it's, a, it's fairly simple, you just need to do all these steps and when you do like a, this operation, when you connect in those two surfaces, make sure that it always it needs to start that, if I go back here, you need to have, you always need to go from a, one of the sketches to the surface. So it's a, it's a, it's a, like, this is what I realized today. It doesn't really work well if I just create two surfaces. So it's better to have one sketch and one surface. And that should give you a really good result. Uh, you can try it yourself and there's going to be probably a lot of problems. So I'm happy to help you with this afterwards because it's a bit hit and miss operation but definitely worth to try it and sometimes if you want to do this opera if i try to do it again here it's called loft uh, because i have here this sketch is now visible it won't allow me to actually go on the bottom of this surface which is a bit pain in the ass so what i need to do i need to disable uh, to make this sketch invisible click on this surface and then make it visible again and cre create, uh, click on that sketch and now it's basically allow me to do this this lofting operation and you can make it disappear again so yeah that's the that's the one way how you can make this this big recess or we can go all the way around and we can make the center of the lenses still like a cylindric and the rest of the frame basically swoop back. So I can show you how to how to do this. We're gonna again use this the same frame. So I'm gonna copy it in a copy and create a new file. Here and now I'm gonna do extrude this and this by six millimeter now the operation is slightly different because <clears throat> i actually want to rest of the frame to be lower than the the center where the lenses are so i'm going to create a new sketch and use again the function here project and i'm going to project myself the outside of the frame and I'm going to also project the inside of the frame like this. And then because I want to have the center still there, so I'm going to make an offset of the lens like this. You can you can try a different different dimensions. I'm going to try here let's say -0.5 mm. And then there's a little trick what I figure out what what looks really good. If you, because now you can go extrude and move this whole body, let's say minus three millimeter lower. And then basically we're gonna make a transition between this top line and this, this edge. But when I did it last time, I basically end up with, uh, I'm gonna actually show you. Um, I'm gonna create a sketch here on the top. And as we said, it's best to have uh, some, actually maybe we can use that here. If you look back here, I can use this sketch probably. Uh, so we're gonna try again loft and I'm gonna use this sketch and tell him this is gonna be my one of the surfaces and add the other one here. Try it again. Okay, I don't remember how I did it. Mm -mm -mm. Sorry, guys, I learned that. Uh, this uh, this thing uh, 
well, a few hours ago, and I know that there's going to be issues. Uh, so if I look back here, okay, I'm going to try it differently. I'm going to, we have here the sketch on the top, which is the one, and I'm going to create another sketch here on the bottom. And I'm going to press the P like a project and project the surface. And see if now I do the loft. I want this surface and I want this surface. Yes, now it's working. So now in this, in this case, it's, it, it works better if you do this operation between two sketches and not between the sketch and then just surface like we did it previously. So that's one thing to learn. And here instead of cut, you're gonna have an operation join. And again, it's gonna leave you with this little thing here on the top, which is basically closing the lens, but you can just delete it like this. And you have this. The, the problem is what it last time to me, it basically make this edge kind of swoop down, which is not ideal because this is the area where you want to have your bridge bump or you want to have quite, quite a lot of material. So I'm going to show you how to fix this. So I'm going to delete these two operations and modify this uh, top sketch I create here. It was this one. I'm going to modify it and create little connection here between the center of the bridge and the outline of the lens. You can see here and another one here. Finish sketch, I hope, uh, actually maybe I'm gonna create a little line here also and finish sketch. And if I now go back to uh, here loft, I'm gonna uh, make this sketch visible. So I'm gonna click on the sketch I created before, then click here plus, and make this second sketch visible. And I'm gonna select this little circle plus this little bridge between the between those two surfaces. And I'm going to press here, join. And it's going to make me this transition slightly nicer with a still thick bridge. Actually, it didn't. For some reason. I'm going to try it again. Loft. I want to start from here. Check. The other Print one. Print screen is damaged. And I think this should be it. No. Hmm. For some reason, I had uh, more luck before when I did here. But it may be because of I create here instead of the straight lines, I create a little uh, like a splines between the between the surfaces. I'm gonna see if this will help or not.
let's see if this will work now. Loft. From this to Yes, now it looks good. Yeah, now it creates much nicer transition and I can just click on this and extrude this. So we have a much nicer transition. It, it looks a bit, a bit lumpy here, but when you have it polished, it's, it's, it's gonna completely disappear. I mirror this whole thing, join, it's gonna look much closer to the original shape and if you don't wanna see these lines, you can click here on the bottom and visual style and just press shade it. So you can see a slightly closer how the frame is gonna actually look like when it's polished. So you're not gonna see these lines and they will probably disappear in a, in a barrels and you can always play with those two splines to make them smoother or just following nicely the shape of the frame to make this even better let's see if i can do it to make this line slightly nicer oh, i think i make it more slightly so yeah that's basically it is there any questions Thing. So uh, if, you, if you want to do the machining, we can just go to manufacture uh, and go back to our previous frame where we had this, these two operations and we can just go to manufacture and copy the front and the back, command C and click here on the setups and paste them again and if I edit the front, just so that I want to play with this and I want to play with this and edit the scalloping process here don't forget to press selection and just select outside and top of the lens and the top of the lens and it's going to give you nicely the surface so yeah that's basically it any anything that I can help you with? Are you, are you able to add like a curve to the um, to the lofted uh, the shape that does the cutting, like uh, the revolve cut or, re or revolve um, chamfer? Could you add like a curve to it so it gives it like a doming? Uh, you can do it in a slight. Yeah, it's gonna be a bit tricky. I think. Well, uh, we can we can try it. If I go back here, because you can use the operation just to fill it, and that can that can give you a very similar. If I just delete all this, and make it visual. You can use an operation here, fill it, and you can create like a, you can put like a five mil or something like this. You mean something like this? Um, yeah, kind of like that. Or like, uh, it seemed like for the loft, the, um, the line that was transitioning between the two sketches was a straight line. I'm wondering if that line could have a curve on it or like a, like a, uh, an S curve almost. So it like, yeah, I don't think so. To be honest, I'm not sure if, if I, go back here design if there's any option for that yeah I'm just curious I was like uh... yeah I know like if, if I look at this uh, this frame I think they have a straight transition I cannot really tell but it might be like a S curve might be possible 
but I'm slightly worried that it's not going to be possible to do it in Fusion. <laughs> I think you will need to have uh, some like a uh, A-class modeling software where you can just drag these surfaces and play with them. But let's sure, it'll probably present other problems as well. Yeah, but let's see what is it. what we can do here. If there's any. Not really, to be honest. Like the guide type, maybe? Or... Yeah, no. the, the guide type is not... Because maybe if I create like a, some sort of line here, which is going to be curved. Yeah. That's interesting. Or if there are tangents on them or something. Yeah. Doesn't look like it. Hmm. Well, I mean, this is super cool. <laughs> Thanks for showing us. I mean... I'm gonna um, I'm gonna uh, take a look at this if I can if I because now it's basically following the straightest line between uh, those two surfaces, but maybe if I create but I'm not sure how it's gonna behave if I create a spline or like a curve, if it's gonna follow just in one area or it's gonna follow everywhere that because then it it will basically need to have some sort of parameters that that curve that it is gonna follow. Yeah, I think it's gonna be a bit. Uh, I think we are forcing fusion to do something way more advanced <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i think like it's, it's definitely worth to try and uh it's it can make like a really interesting frames and it's a bit like advantage uh, advance advance knowledge to do with like these uh, these surfaces but it's it, it, it can make some frames way more interesting yeah i thought i thought you needed a five axis to do something like this but this is way cool no, like a, literally the, the operation that I'm always using is scallop and it's absolutely spotless. It works, it works uh, really well. And awesome. Man of, if, you, if you do the scallop and the good thing is because you're not cutting a lot of material. So you can almost go on a maximum speed of your CNC because you're just cutting literally maybe worst case scenario, you're going to cut two millimeters with a ball head cutter. So it can take any load so you can make this operation quite quick and if you don't want to have any hustle at all just put uh, lesser uh, gaps between the each step but 0 0.5 I would stick with that and that should still look really good there's gonna be maybe some issues when you when you do frame like this it's a bit tricky because you need to if, if you're cutting the groove for the lenses afterwards if you have a tool for cutting the groove this is get a bit tricky because you don't have a flat surfaces so I'm gonna show like a so what I'm sometimes doing if I if I if, if I if I have a badge to do a lot of these frames, I would make myself a little like a helping point. I'm gonna go back to design and uh, delete this part. So what I'll do, I will just go here on the back and create myself here. like a few small uh, circles and I will extrude them by six millimeters on this side. Join, uh, actually it needs to be more, I guess, because this is more than six. Ah, six. So I would create something like this so when I do the groove and I'm, uh, I'm trying to cut it out, it will help me to have the frame perfectly flat with the surface. And because of it's such a small thing, it's very easy to just use the sandpaper and get rid of them afterwards. You can even maybe use one or two, but normally this is like what I would do. Let's say this should be, if you make them two millimeter, that should be plenty of surface to give you a bit more guide and support. With the, with the other version, with this, it's not a problem because you, you, you'll have, you have the center and the, still the top is in the same thickness, so there shouldn't be an issue. Only in something like this, it's good to have some support. Perfect, any other questions?
Perfect. So guys, I'm going to share with you uh, all these frames and you can just follow them. Uh, uh, you, you can see all the operation, how it was done, how, uh, how you can uh, how you can do it yourself and how it behaves. Just yeah, if, if you need to take something from this class, always make yourself that, that reference point because that's going to help you to have this perfectly centered. If you do some machining on the front like this, and you're going to be 0 0.2 millimeter off, it's going to be very visible. So you need to be really, really accurate with this. With this kind of operations, when you do a lot of scalloping and you do the, the chamfer edges, you don't need to be worried that much because it's going gonna, it's gonna to look good. And maybe you might have a little bit more uh, area here and less here, but it's, it's not going to be visible after, after barreling. So, yeah. Thank you very much, Mate. This is great. I think I think that's it. I'm just gonna. So yeah, thanks a lot, guys. I'm just gonna stop recording now.